Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining Art and I on our Founders Vlog on Celebrating Act 2. Art, how are you? Good morning, John. How are you? I'm, I'm uh, alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that better than a couple of the other days when you weren't, so... Uh, no, I'm 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 joyous, Art. It's the season for joy. Joyous. So it's, it's the giving season. Ah, like uh, okay. I was. Uh, I'll come back to that later on. So, uh, but we we in this giving season, we've given of ourselves, and uh, we just with uh, our uh, good friend Manny Pacheco went and interviewed twelve authors. Oh, that's right. At, yeah. At a Hollywood event. And uh, yep. boy, were they all wonderful. I mean, they're Hollywood really great. heritage. Yeah. It, we went yeah. to Hollywood. And I, how many did we record? Close to a dozen people. Close to a dozen. And the bonus was that because we had left early, figuring we'd have some traffic, we got there an hour or so early. And we pulled into the parking lot, and there were like 40 Model T Fords. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Which which uh, we, we were able to set up our camera quickly and uh, record yeah. as well. The, uh, it was the uh, Horseless Carriage Club of Los Angeles. Right. And we but just happened were... upon it. Right. Uh, yeah. they, they actually arranged, I guess, to meet there before they went off to a, uh, uh, a convention at a hotel or something. Uh, so it was really nice. It was actually sponsored by the museum to allow yeah. them to come there and they served them coffee and what have you, but yeah. they were really great. They were, most of them were dressed in period costumes yeah. and uh, they were hoot. Dusters, yeah. yeah. Now, let's, let's go back to the, to the uh, Hollywood Heritage event though. That was a book signing event right. um, where, because Hollywood Heritage has a wonderful bookstore in, that, in their museum. Um, but they invited, I think it was a dozen authors uh, who have written books about Hollywood. Old right. Hollywood, New Hollywood, all kinds of architectural Hollywood, Hollywood personalities. So we, Manny interviewed, I think we did close to a dozen interviews, I'm not sure. Right. And they'll play throughout the year. They'll play throughout 2022. Um, wonderful interviews, wonderful authors, wonderful books. I remember uh, William Wellman Jr. was one of the interviews. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about his father's life as a director. Wild, uh, his father, Wild Bill, right? Wild Bill Wellman. Uh, Mary, um, what was Mary's last name? They did the architecture book um, and did Hollywood Land, the, the, the history of Hollywood Land. Right. Oh, yeah. And there was a guy, uh, was a Dave Ackerman, who did one on transportation and Hollywood, not just yes. trolleys and things, but. But the, the transportation system that was actually growing up across America, but also being used in movies for Keystone Cops, as well as uh, sure. train robberies and all the other kind of things. And, and how, how locomotives and trains became the sub-themes of a right. lot of movies. Early oh, and movies. we even had the, the pleasure of um, uh, Leonard Maltin. Yes. Who uh, was there uh, with one of his books. And, and all these uh, authors were there because they're also committed to the museum so that the museum right. was getting a piece of the action for all of this. Uh, and by the way... Nice way uh, to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Leonard, Leonard Moulton was there with his... Uh, he just became a grandfather for the first time. And his uh, daughter, who is a partner of his in some of his enterprises, uh, was there uh, and eventually... Her grandchild was there. So it was, it was just a fun event of people who genuinely like each other, who are like-minded, and all very studious in what they did. These aren't just uh, uh, off-the-cuff books. These are, uh, most of them, highly researched uh, uh, books by serious oh, they're, authors. They're, they're beautiful books. They're, a lot of them are coffee table quality books. Um, uh, but they're just they're wonderful. If you love movies, you would love every single one of these books. So... HollywoodHeritage.com okay. uh, if you're interested in those kinds of books. But that brings me to another subject, Art. And, and that, that what would that subject be, John? CelebratingActWho.com. Love it, yes. But we have, <laughs> you know what, John, we have, we have amazing contributors, many of whom are authors themselves, and wouldn't they make amazing holiday gifts? You you took the words right out of my mouth. Did I? Did bring, I? Well, bring them back. Well, let me let me throw them back to you. Uh, which, <laughs> there you go. Um, you're right. 
in fact, um, I would. I think I made a list uh, recently. I would say we have ten regular contributors, right? And on subjects far and wide. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, as many as six or seven of them are authors. Right. Some um, of them ha have more than a dozen books uh, to their credit as John well. John Mariani, for instance, oh, wow, has yeah. written over a dozen books. Right, including um, uh, Grilling for Dummies, uh, yep. which, which would, he's, he's such a connoisseur to, to have his name associated with something like that, but, but he's just a fun guy, and he likes, so that was a fun book, Grilling for Dummies, but he's got a, a, a slew of serious uh, 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 books as well <clears throat> that are well-respected throughout uh, the industry uh, sure M uh, mostly mostly about food I have um, I have his encyclopedia of American food and drink mm. and it is uh, honest to goodness it's that thick it is a true encyclopedia and my wife has been thumbing through it it's like a I don't know what it's like a coffee table book but it's not hardbound and glossy like that but it is it's fun reading because you can open up to any page and find the definition or the ingredients of, or the recipe for, all kinds of food and drinks. It, it's just a wonderful book. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a narrative book. Right. It's a great reference book. But, but he also did, yeah. he did a couple of novels, mm. um, which you don't think of for a guy who is a food and travel author. Right, and we actually featured some of them uh, uh, on uh, our program because uh, some of them he was writing, and since there was a pandemic and he couldn't go out and talk them, he started serializing them like the old what they used to do with magazines, you yes, know, they, where where they would serialize a, a chunks yeah. of the uh, uh, a book in a magazine and then eventually sell them. So he did that with us, uh, and we talked about something about pizza. Uh, it was yes, actually it was pizza. a Mer love and pizza. Love and pizza. Mer and now pizza. he's now he's serializing his uh, novel Al Capone's Gold. Yeah, uh, this is all on his newsletter, by the way, right. which is well, available at johnmariani.com. Right, and also uh, didn't he uh, do one with his brother called Almost Golden? Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, growing that's up in the, the Bronx, name, which is also the name of his radio show. <laughs> right, <laughs> Almost Golden. It was about growing up in the Bronx, right, uh, in the fifties, and how it those were the golden years, almost. <laughs> right. And, well, they it gets it, it it goes in cycles, and it went down, and now it's a lot of it's coming back up. My wife uh, was uh, uh, born and raised in the Bronx, and in her day, when he, she was uh, even a pre teenager with her little brother, they would walk to Yankee Stadium, and yeah. by uh, well, without any problem, nobody ever bothered with them, and right. uh, they they sit in the bleachers for like eighty cents for the two yeah. of them or something. Yeah, and, that's. That was golden. Those were the that, golden those years. were golden years down there. Yeah, and John just recently, John. Here's a, a fascinating little tidbit. Just recently on his radio show, he interviewed Dion DeMucci. Oh, Dion and the Belmonts. Dion and sure. the Belmonts. Sure. All right, the Belmonts being the Belmont section of the Bronx. Right. So that uh, it was a fun interview. Uh, anyway, John is just one of six or seven of our regular contributors that have written books. Dr. Liz who I have tremendous respect for. I've, believe me, I've gotten healthier just by doing our interviews with Dr. Liz. She's written a book, um, and it's called Go for Great. Go for Great. Go for Great. Her Guide to Thrive at Every Age. Mm. Uh, and I have to read it, believe me, because the, the good information I've gotten from her interviews is just a tip of the iceberg. Right, so, and, and she, and she, and she uh, interesting uh, as all of our contributors are. That uh, early in her career, she was a gynecologist uh, and delivered babies for twenty or thirty years, and then uh, uh, about ten years ago, she went and got some other advanced training, and um, uh, would uh, treating, but uh, primarily women, but anybody who's in change of life, menopause and what have you. And she got very into hormone replacement therapies and things like that. So yeah. she's, a, particularly for our audience, an absolute uh, uh, treasure trove of information on how to get more out of life and, and not accept blahs or that you're too tired or this yeah. or that. But there are things that can be done while we're all living our uh, longer, healthier lives. 
Yeah, and you know what I like, uh, Art, on her website, uh, which is drlizmd.com, hmm. she's got all the supplements that she recommends. Right. Um, I, I know you're not as big into supplements as I am, but right. she's got a whole host of supplements that are great for people. Uh, right. And for also, people. also uh, that uh, while there are supplements that one of the we recently spoke to about, like fish oil, people are worried right. about heavy metals and things like that. And, and, and she said all supplements are not alike. And she's yep. done a good deal of research to find out which ones are free of most of yeah. these harmful things that people hear about and scare them from yeah. uh, going ahead and uh, and taking these supplements. And so beyond just being uh, a respected uh, doctor in a field, she goes for further research so that uh, even things as simple as getting a supplement, uh, she gives a lot of hints whether you get them through her auspices or whether you get them and she recommends other places that you can yeah. go to get some really good stuff. Yeah, but uh, her book, I, I think her book would make, as would any of Mariani's books for that matter. Oh, terrific uh, holiday great, gift. Great holiday gift, yeah. Right. So, and then what about uh, uh, Manny Pacheco? Manny uh, Pacheco with a Forgotten Hollywood series. Uh, yeah, he's got, uh, what, three or four of them now? Uh, uh, he's just got on the three Forgotten... and number four is on its way. On its way. And uh, uh, I've got them all sitting on my shelf and they're just wonderful reads. About oh, uh, everything from uh, Dr. Gillespie, uh, who really was in a wheelchair uh, yeah. at the uh, as, uh, uh, near the uh, end of his career, but still appeared on screen, and that's a whole other story about uh, uh, the handicap being in Hollywood. Uh, he does a the, lot of right. uh, he he uncovers a lot of um, unknown stories, unknown or little known stories about right. the. Uh, the most famous names in Hollywood, and sometimes the the B movie names, some great characters. Right. Uh, each of his books covers different characters and different actors, and directors, and uh, they're all wonderful little stories. Oh, and, uh, and easy and, to read and fun. Uh, Steve Campbell, uh, oh, making the making your, the brain was for making your mind magnificent, and yes. how how you. Uh, his his basic theme has been, and he's just so much fun to speak to, uh, when we speak to him each time, about uh, his basic uh, uh, concept is that your brain believes whatever you tell it. it yeah. It's not very discerning at all. So if you tell it bad stuff, like, boy, this sucks, it sucks. <laughs> if you say to yourself, and do it in the right way, and reaffirm that things are going to be okay, uh, you can uh, improve your outlook on a lot of things. And he's got this book is just absolutely stunning. I remember when we were first starting to interview him, I read it cover to cover. And I said, this is really an interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, now I know how stupid my brain really is. Thanks. <laughs> right. And how, how, how valuable this kind of book would be if you could read oh. it. It's it's a it, I think it is probably the most basic self help book there mm -hmm. ever was, right? Um, because that's where all the self help starts is in your brain, right? Yeah. So uh, let's see, with Mariani, Dr. Liz, Steve Campbell, Dr. Liz, Steve Herbie Campbell. J, Herbie J. Pilato. That I call him the TV Maven. Right. We got a Hollywood. We got we got forgotten Hollywood. This is forgotten TV. Well, no, it's not so forgotten because he really talks about all the stuff we grew up with. Our yeah, people, all, if baby if boomers you're a baby and, boomer, and younger, right? You know everything he's talking about. You lived right. with it. You grew up with it. And um, the two, the first two books we interviewed him about were um, well, dashing, about the male male daring, icons and the female icons. Dashing, daring, uh, debonair. Yes, that was the male icons of, right. of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Right. And I wrote down some names. Dick Van Dyke, uh, Adam West, John Travolta, mm. David Cassidy, Nat King Cole. Anybody who was on television who was an icon we became famous right. in those years. Um, and it's great, great behind-the-scenes biographies of these people. Yeah. And by the way, he knows a lot of these people. Uh, like. Oh. Uh, uh, well, well, let's get down to uh, the, the one. Of the, he's got a counterpart of that for women, uh, something Gidget. And... Yes, the Gidget's uh, uh, Glamour, Gidget's and Girls Next Door is the, right. is the, 
female icons of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they included uh, uh, the actress uh, Dawn Wells from mm -hmm. uh, played Marianne on Gilligan's Island. Right. Um, uh, let's see, Elizabeth Sally Montgomery. Field. Yep. Elizabeth Montgomery, uh, Bewitched. As a matter of fact, he's had such a close relationship with her that uh, he's written, I think, several books on her beyond what you'll find in any of beyond these the books. Gadgets, because Robert, he, yeah. he knows these people. He's interviewed them uh, for the most part. And, and in and fact, he still does that up. now. Correct. You know, what's fascinating about it is he grew up as a kid watching these people on television. Right. He grew up, went into the business as a producer and a writer and became friends with them and started writing right. books about them. It's, it's, it's truly a unique perspective and all his books are just wonderful. Uh, I think what I like about his books is that they're all fun and they're positive. You know, right. he's not trying to do the reveal the dark side of anybody. Um, right. So there, because these people were our heroes when we were growing up, you know. Yeah, and he just, uh, he's a, just a, a fun guy. And he's like the kind of guy that you know that when he sat down with these people, they were having a good time with one another yes. because he's just, he's just a fun yeah. guy to be with. He's respectful of, of what they've done yep. uh, and the uh, uh, influence that they've had on uh, larger audiences. And uh, yeah, not all of them have had perfect lives, and he he brings that out also. But he brings them out as real people. Yeah, uh, you know, he's uh, Herbie J has written a dozen, like Mariani has probably right. written close to a dozen books. I don't know the actual count, but both of them mm -hmm. are very prolific. Um, and Herbie J wrote a book about life goes on. Do you remember that TV series? Mm -hmm. Life goes on, and yeah. uh, about the bionic man, the bionic woman. So you got to go on Amazon. And look at look up the author's name and watch, look for all their books. They all, most of these people have. And you know what uh, we're going to do, John? Book. We're going to put a link to each one of their websites uh, in in the description down below. Down below. That, that that'll idea. take me that'll take me a week because you know technically sometimes I get hung up in the weeds. Oh, let's not forget uh, we have we have so many delicious uh, contributors. They're just all wonderful to speak to. But another yes. one who's about to publish her first book, Debbie Weiss, The Hungover oh. Widow. Uh, yes. Now that uh, I think she, I think she said that's scheduled to come out in the summer of twenty two, right. and has a working title. Who knows if it will change? Called available as is. Okay, yes, but available she, as is. I love that. First, first of all, she's just absolutely wonderful to talk to. She makes you smile. She, yes. she's been through something really terrible that sparked her into this new career because she was an attorney, uh, but her husband of thirty some odd years, our high school sweetheart died of yeah. cancer when she was 50. And yeah. uh, she started, to, we, we're now doing a series with her, The Cesspool of Middle-Aged <laughs> Dating, where she yeah. talks about all the horrors about, you know, why can't they be just nice people who are looking to have a good time yeah. together as yeah. opposed to the cesspool that she's found. And uh, uh, she's uh, written a lot of articles for the Huffington Post and others, and, uh, and now is accumulating this into a, a book uh, as I say, I think it's called available. As he's what's it coming out, John, next spring? Um, I thought it was summer of twenty two. Oh, whatever okay. it is, look for, look for the hungover widow. I'm, sure, right. I'm pretty sure Debbie Weiss will be using that. Uh, so, John, monitor. here's my here's my suggestion to our audience because we have the value, uh, the the privilege of doing all the interviews and. Uh, editing them, and so we work with. So we see them several times before they even hit the air. But yeah, uh, uh, you should go. I think you'll find uh, one or two of, of these books really enjoyable for a gift for yourself, not just for uh, uh, a gift for somebody else. But uh, in the meantime, if you go to our YouTube channel or to our Celebrating Act Two Con Contributors page, you can find all the videos that we've done on all of them. And if you yep. go to the YouTube channel, we actually have a playlist. So if you really get into Manny, which is easy to get into, we've done about 60 or 70 interviews with him already. You could binge Something watch like them when yeah. Uncle Albert comes over and you're trying to get away from him during the Christmas uh, a party. Go in the other room and say, look, you have a little research to do for work. And you take your tablet and go off to the corner. You could binge watch Manny for probably about five hours. And uh, uh, John Mariani, just to, it's just I could just close my eyes and listen to him talk. He's such a, a great storyteller. 
Yeah, of, of things that he's done, but he brings it down to a very uh, you and me and friends kind and of places level. he's gone. Yeah, world, right. a world traveler. But before right. we go, I want to mention um, our other contributors who have not written books. Who I so think what's to wrong? Books. What's wrong with you? Okay. Next year, we want to be able to talk about your book. So these are to the other contributors we haven't mentioned. That's I'm right. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead John. Right. <laughs> so there's Donna Lynn Polito. Oh, yeah. And, you know, she, she's she got a couple of books in her. Um, but, again, go to these people's website. Donna Lynn Polito, Sarah Surrett, uh, oh, Get the, Positive, get, get positive Michelle the, Fabrega. And by the uh, way, the by the coach. way, one one great thing about Sarah is she's not just a dog trainer. I mean, that's what sort of like the name implies. But she trains her horses, yeah, and and she trains, all she trains horses, cats. She's got goats, and goats, chickens, and they have a pig. She's now wait, the are those goats like in greatest of all time? So she's not training football players, right? <laughs> the, the goats with the four-legged ones. Yeah. Yeah. My my favorite is the pig. She's te taught her, her her family's pig to sit and come to its name. I, 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 first of all, I don't know why anybody would have a family pig, but if you did, you would want you would want it to be like a dog. Come come when you call it, wouldn't you? What what was her pig's name? Family pig's, pig's name. name is Toby. Toby, yeah. Toby that, the pig. That, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, actually, I think it's her son's uh, uh, pet. But nevertheless, it's a uh, family. So um, the last is Bill Jordan. Bill oh. Jordan, my favorite radio guy, philosopher. He's He's got a, two or three books in him he that sure he just does. hasn't gotten around to writing yet. And I hope he does. But, you know, despite the fact that they haven't written books, you can go to their websites, which, again, we'll, Art will put in the description below this video, you can go to their websites and follow them on Twitter and uh, subscribe to their websites and mm -hmm. on YouTube and all of that stuff. And of course, watch them on Celebrating Act Two. Right. Well, Did we miss anything, Art? Um, no. Well, we haven't written a book yet. You know, you're right. Mm. There's a book here. <laughs> it's the book of books. Right. Well, <laughs> so in the meantime, we just use bookies, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. What am I missing? Festivus for the rest of us, right? Right. Yeah. That's my 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 boy. It took, That's your favorite. It's, it's taken actually. it's taken three or four years of partnership for you to, for you to be able to say that. Okay, of course, uh, it's totally mocking me, uh, because that's one of my favorite holidays. But uh, in any event. Uh, Enjoy our regular contributors, enjoy your family, and we look forward to seeing you next week and the week after and the week after that. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.